Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO Bricks throughout this last week. Links to everybody I am talking about and a whole lot more are in the description below if you want to learn more about these LEGO designers. And before we jump in, I'd just like to say that the new model that came out in the web store this week is the Pagoda from Space Bricks. It's an excellent model compatible with the modular style of building. And also today going on sale is the pre-order for the Iowa class battleship from the designer Chuck built at 1 200 scale. It is an absolutely massive model. We'll scale with the rest of the Navy ships in the web store and parts for the finalish version of this model are uh, arriving as I speak. As you could probably tell, we're very stoked to get this build underway. It's gonna be an absolutely massive project. Maybe the longest model in the web store? I'm not totally sure. Anyways, let's jump into some honorable mentions. Here's an excellent bonsai tree from Mr. Brickman. This is the Deadwood bonsai tree. Christopher Coster built a Lego horse at a larger scale. Love the colors from Gun Building. The Amazon Ancient Ruins have a great way of popping here. Christian Linton has a wonderfully clean Gundam. I especially like the build for the legs. The bullseye looks so perfect for the target practice from Peter's Kevin. Though I gotta say, this archer isn't standing too far away. If you like eight stud wide cars, SP lineup has an excellent assortment of models. This is just his latest one. I love the stance of these infantry support walkers. They're almost micro builds from suspended animation. That's the designer. Here's a big, dirty, awesome looking castle from Magnus W. The title is Care Moren Lego. And Josephine Monteroso built a fig scale looking IG-88. This builder has some of the most interesting illegal connections from any figure designer in Lego right now. And here's just one of many Febro very rovers from Frost. Chung Po Cheng's astronaut action figure is one that is being submitted for that ideas contest. Looks awesome. And the title here is AG Systems Prototype from Tino Pu Tianet. Valentine's Day was last week. Here's Cupid from Luis Pena. This is an all too real scene that I have been watching for the past several days. Chris Goddard titled this Brick Separator Snow Plow. It's very appropriate that the separator brick is the actual plow. From Victor, this is a brick sketch of Bojack Horseman, obviously. And if you really want to break the mold with Rover Designs, Andreas Lenander probably takes the cake this week. This is Q21R. Frost is calling this one a Rover. I don't really agree. It's definitely just a cool looking space bike in my mind. This render is absolutely breathtaking from Admiral Plaque Bar. There's been a few different iterations in the last couple of weeks. Marco Debon, who's amazing at making robots, has upscaled this MIDI design to a slightly larger one for this bust. And there's just some great, great details. Nobu Terry's Link has a wonderfully animate stance. And the latest mech animal from Mitsuru Nikaido is the ever intimidating mech pufferfish. LDD model maker titled this digital render Gunship Down. And now let's jump into the top 10. Starting off with a wonderfully unique figure. This is from Joxin. The title is Minesweeper. The arms and legs are bulky and bulbous with those inside out tire pieces. And there's a combination of some very unique round green pieces that help build out both the head and armor. The yellow eyes in particular popping away have a great way of illuminating themselves. And there's also some magnets on the front just for an extra bit of detailing. Just love all the different connections here. From Corvus Ariac Mox. This is Sorcerer's Tower, and I think it is something that you can actually vote for on LEGO Ideas at the moment. The staggered dark bluish gray bullion pieces used on any of the corners is a really great way of highlighting this model. The build for the door at the base is great. There's a lot of ornate stone detailing all over this tower, and the dark red painted embroidered woodwork at the top has a great way of just pulling away and popping from the rest of this relatively gray and black build. This is is a model you can choose to support if you like. Let's move on to number eight from Moko. This is Lego Knights Mech. The flat silver through color has a great way of illuminating this jagged and somewhat intricate armor that we have working for this particular build. And then when you check out this next picture, you'll see the multi-arm configuration. And now you know that this is a knight that you would never, ever, ever want to run into. The simple gold accents on the model have a way of pulling your eye. And I also really enjoy 
that red hairpiece that's been used at the very top. Moving on to the designer Martin Valla, here is a rally car built at 115 scale, 16 studs wide. And what's nice here is that it's not just a cool looking frame and it's not just a cool looking car, but instead Martin has really decided to focus on some of the internal details of what make a rally car unique. You know how you see one of these things flip off the side of the road and roll like 30 times and then when all the chaos is done the drivers just pop out. Well, look at all of the framing. Look at all that extra support that you have on the inside of these cars to make sure that this doesn't turn into a crumpled ball of paper when it goes off the side of the road. It's really cool that he managed to capture so many awesome details for the internals of this car in Lego bricks. Here is number six. If you've been keeping count from Simon Liu, the title is Consequences. And if you guys have ever been asking me how to get on to top 10 mocks. All you have to do is make a bonsai tree where the flowers are made of baby heads. That's all you need to do. Seriously, joking aside, there's so many unique approaches for everything on this model. The bulk of the tree itself seems to be detailed with a lot of black whip pieces. The stone looking build for the hand has some great looking proportions. I would love to see more of a body built with a similar build style, in fact. The simple curb for the blue water has a wonderful glassy effect, and of course, yes, the flowers are made of baby heads. And now we're moving on to something that I wouldn't quite say is a modified version of a set necessarily, but you can see that the modular birch Books set has been a clear heavy influence for this particular model that we're looking at now. It's a corner store and it's just a much larger Birch Books bookstore. The details are much cleaner though. I love the lettering detail builds for books in the very front and also the open book that is just above it. Kale Frost, the designer, has really captured a lot of excellent external details. I don't know what the inside looks like, but it's a great evolution of a design for an original Lego set. Number four is from the build Tobias Moonzert, and we have this excellent galloping horse. The specific title is A Horse Galloping, and so what you have is a wonderfully round, detailed build for the body of a horse, and then he of course made a video, and the galloping motion that this guy managed to capture is something that I have not seen in Lego bricks ever. Out of all the different automaton builds, this is probably one of the most lifelike points of motion that I have seen, and it's wonderful to see such a mechanically proficient design combined with some truly wonderful details. If this wasn't a moving horse, the rounded build design for both the back of the horse and the legs really creates an excellent shape regardless of its internal or external function, I should say. We're jumping down to number three. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this designer, or in fact, the name of this build. Remember, check out the description below. But regardless, we have one of the most impressive train setups I've ever seen. And on top of that, this person decided to take this train out in the snow, and they managed to pull off some awesome looking photos. Not only is the main build for the engine extremely good looking when you get closer and closer and closer, those build details are really all there. But when you pull out and see how many cars are attached to this train, it truly is one of those those models, or one of those series of models, I should say, that very few people could ever hope to match. Train builders are a huge part of the LEGO community. They do not get featured nearly often as much as they should. And this is probably one of the best examples I have seen of just some awesome train designing. And kudos to bringing all this stuff outside to get some cool photos like this. Number two is from John Moffat. This is the NI65B. X-Wing, so it's a variant of form based on an X-Wing design, but there are some telltale differences to this model that really bring out a unique shape. There's in fact some shapes on the wings here, especially for those intakes, that I have not seen on another type of ship before, at least not until his 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 previous version of a model, which was the NI-65 X-Wing, slightly different. You can see that this is a really similar shape, which was inspired from his NI-24 model, which was a design even just before that. Regardless, the intakes curving into a point towards the back of the plane or the back of this ship really wakes up the angles of this design in an interesting way. I also like that the opening for those intakes is built with those old window pieces that you got from 
old pirate sets or something like that. The trans clear dish piece imitating the idea of spinning blades is a really nice touch. And it's certainly one of my favorite alts on a Star Wars or classic Star Wars design. Now we're finishing off with a similar style of model. This is from Cylon TW. The title is Sky Racers Yellow Hammer. Now talk about interesting angles here. Rarely do you ever get uh, the base of the wing coming in at an upward angle and then flattening out. The double propellers have some wonderful bullion detailing in the front. The color highlights are great with those blue wingtips. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but does the front nose of this Sky Racer not look like the front of a 1950s Ford pickup truck? The creativity and cleanliness of the angles on this model simply cannot be understated. It's such a cool looking flyer and I absolutely would love to swoosh it around. Anyways, that's it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Everybody, if you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, comment, share. Please do check out those links in the description below to see the designers that we were talking about here. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video and I'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!